We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you'll get actionable business advice. Hear stories from industry leaders. And share a laugh or two with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy. One conversation at a time. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer X, and today I'm here with my co-host, Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Vivens, director of marketing for Pioneer X. Today, our guest is Pete Nagel. He is the owner of Coastal Drug in Midway, Georgia. Pete, welcome. Did you manage not to get COVID? I have avoided COVID so far, knock on wood. Oh, um, like in total? <laughs> like you haven't yeah, had well, I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I didn't get it from Amer- from the trade shows, though. That I got gotcha. That is a good thing. Yeah, we went and saw Garth Brooks Saturday night, and like, hey, if we're going to get COVID again, this is the place. Mm-hmm. Um, there were 80,000 people yeah. screaming at the top of their lungs. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was craziest, craziest thing. It was a great concert. I can Im- I- I've heard he is one of the, one of the go-to shows you got to go watch. Mm-hmm. All Definitely. Right. All right, so before... Th- we started the podcast. We're talking 80s okay. slang. Jeff's so, been TikToking. How's, how's your 80s slang? Y'all don't even want to know. Um, I'm a 90s baby, so. You're a 90s baby? No, I know, I know. Yeah. And like I said, just. And Marsh is a 90s baby, so maybe. I'm right. an 80s baby. An 80s baby? All right, so dink. What's a dink? Yeah. A boat? That's nope. what okay, I, I, I was like. You're thinking a boat? a boat? But I mean, it also mm-hmm. means the other thing that you said. So Yeah, it's dual income, no kids. No kids. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, yeah. We yeah. called them dinks. So dinks. in the 80s, that was kind of, the, I guess, the beginning of more college women coming out and working. And you'd had these yeah. couples and they were waiting a little bit longer to have kids. And yeah, they had I'm, money and were traveling around places. I initially thought the boat thing too, but I was like, no, that's a dinghy. It's yeah, a dinghy. that's a dinghy. That's what I was thinking. Um, yeah. No, we... I lived that dink life for about five years, and it was, it was great. It was glorious, <laughs> glorious. But it's over. So, so you're seeing the end of the dinks. Your dinks no more. Yeah, it's gone. All right. So Bogart, what's Bogart? Bogart. Uh huh. Bogart. More of a Cheech and Chong reference. Yeah. yeah. That means to hog something. You're gonna Bogart it. You're gonna keep it all to yourself. <laughs> I hope this is not on the podcast because I am terrible. <laughs> no, there was a there's a really cool TikTok, and we 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 we've, we're thinking about playing that where we have you know somebody younger like you and and, and where um we, we hit do, you with our older slang yeah so so and what's then you a, hit us yeah. with the more current what's, what's, slang think a, can you think of a slang what's a, th- a slang that that a, an eighties guy like me might not know an eighty um what what slang I, are you using these days have you heard have you heard bussin Bussin. No, what's bussin? Bussin is just kind of like, it's bussin. It's good. You know, it's, it's, if you go to a restaurant and the food's really good, that food's bussin. That's the, that's the new thing. Okay. Yeah. I've got what a niece was... that's like 15 years old and she teaches me all these things. Like, I'm, it's, bussin. it's ridiculous. Bussin. So bussin. I wonder where that derived from. I'm trying to, I'm sure y'all heard bougie. Um, yeah. I guess that's probably old. Um, she told me I know it was like, Chuggy or something? I can't remember what it is. Chuggy, yes. Chuggy. What is Chuggy? Have you heard Chuggy? Uh, uh, yes, it? I've heard Chuggy. I, for, I forget what it means. Um, I forget what it means. But I yeah, I've got a 13-year-old son, and he goes, he tells me all this stuff, and I'm like, okay. What but, was the one that, that I get, they hit me with a, a week or so? T. Isn't that getting the T? Getting the T. Or whatever? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I've heard like, that. Yeah, Chuggy means like out of date, like old school or. Your clothes are chuggy there, I guess. That's right. I don't know. Your clothes are chuggy is like, what now? It's like you're it's, dressed it's for an your old, old school. school. It's your old school. It's, you're out of style. You're, you're old school. You're clothes are chuggy. Not cool. Huh. Chuggy. That, yeah. Are, are, have you heard of a simp? Nope. What's a simp? A simp is kind of like, like I guess in high school, you know, when you know, your buddy gets a girlfriend and he's obsessed with the girlfriend and he only hangs out with her. Mm-hmm. You know, now she he's, tells him he, he's now a simp. He's yeah. a simp. Mm-hmm. I wonder where that one came from. 
How about like you just take Cohen out to dinner tonight, and then you get all this education? <laughs> yeah, you think you think Cohen has all that? Yes, he does. That's that's funny. I I hear the <laughs> the simp and the chuggy and the. So so I'm gonna text Cohen and tell him he's a simp. Yes. Yeah, text <laughs> See what he says. He got a little girlfriend. <laughs> there you go. Well, so today we're gonna learn about Pete. It's gonna be fun. So I uh, just want to try to be a mix of just learning some about you again. and, and So then. we were introduced to Pete this past April while we were in Savannah uh, visiting Erin um, Dalton. And she was taking us through some of her pharmacies and, and introduced us to you. Um, and, of the, I mean, super energetic person, like just like Erin. So I, I love her. She's one of my favorite people. So, um, yeah, getting to meet another super energetic like Aaron is just always so cool. And someone who's enthusiastic and passionate about what they're doing so much so that you created your own antibiotic, correct? Uh, no, we created probiotic, a, a probiotic, probiotic, probiotic yeah. not antibiotic, yeah. probiotic. So, uh, in, yeah, yeah. And during COVID, um, beginning of COVID, uh, we basically saw a need that was there for like an immune defense supplement. Um, you know, I, I, in the beginning I was recommending, you know, People would come, hey, what's, what's the supplements you need? What, what I need to take? And heck, I had a list of 10 things. It's like, you need all these, you know, because that's in the beginning. We didn't know. Right. And um, eventually we're like, we can do this way better. We can come up with something this specific that, you know, it's a one-stop shop. It's it's going to help the patient and it's going to help the patient immediately. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what we did. We created, uh, it's called ID6. It uh, stands for Immune Defense 6. Okay. It's a, a immune defense supplement. Um, all of it's ingredients in the supplement are active so it starts working immediately uh so that is one of the reasons kind of why we we wanted people something to take something that started working immediately we didn't want you so to it's not a probiotic it's a combine of, vit- of yeah. different vitamins it's, it's basically a, a vitamin yeah. a vitamin yep. pack but right. in yeah, one basically your vitamin pack because in the beginning we tried to i guess package all the you know the, these supplements into one pack and give it to the patient but the the board of pharmacy did does not approve of that in georgia so we did not do that so we kind of you know, oh, like the repackaging manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, you can't really repackage. So we like we can manufacture our own. So that's kind of what we did. We reached out and found a company that could you know manufacture it for us, and we create our own immune oh. defense vitamin. So, and how many pharmacies ended up use, are using that or ended up using it? We're in a, I think thirty nine states and about 200, 200 pharmacies. So how did how did you get this product in two hundred something different pharmacies? Honestly, word of mouth. Um, we started selling it in our in our region, our area. Uh, it kind of, you know, people would come to come to our stores and buy it, and they would go back to their own towns and saying, you know, hey, pharmacy, can you order this? Or we would talk to people at trade shows, or we would, you know, Facebook pharmacy ownership Facebook groups. I mean, mm-hmm. we would uh, we would kind of show our success, and people reached out. And I, I would say a ton of our business so far from the vitamin is all repeat customers. Um, we that is. Definitely majority. So they're right, selling it, and customers, patients are liking it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, it's got it's it stands for ID six. It's got six different uh, ingredients in it, um, and the people that are taking it are loving it. I've got uh, it's it's got a lot of active, like we talk about active B twelve, active B nine um, mm-hmm. supplements that help just in general your you know body's health and are vital to your nutritional intake. Um, I've got one hairdresser. She thinks that. She is convinced that it makes her hair hair grow. Um, so okay. she and I, I obviously don't have any research in that as well. But right. no, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a great vitamin. Um, you know, we we recommend we sell a lot of it, and it's it, it, I think it's been truly beneficial for the patients during this. So time. if it's like if it if it's not available at my local pharmacy, is this something that I can order on Amazon? Because a lot of suppliers will just put their product on Amazon. No, we are not on Amazon. Um, you know, we're we're independent boo. pharmacists, so we we want to we want to stay boo. with independent pharmacy. Sorry, yeah, I, I had to boo Marcia. No. Yes, had to boo had to boo the Amazon yes. shopper. Sorry, is this something that you placed on your own online? Well, that was my next question. Do you have <laughs> yeah. an online ordering platform? And and let's put in the shameless plug. What is the name of the product? So yeah, so it's ID six. Uh, it's Frontline Nutrition. Our website is ID hyphen six dot com. So ID hyphen six dot com. Okay. You can order online. Um, that being said, if an order is ever placed online, we always check to make sure that there's not an independent pharmacy in that town that sells it okay. before we fulfill that order. Because um, nice. 
we're independent pharmacy and we we, we want to look out for the profession as much as we can we want to and we want to push business to you uh, so if that ever, is ever the case we always like to reach out to that that patient that's ordering it and say hey look this is available at your town and your pharmacy um, we also recommend that you know once you buy it online if you get a shipment take it to your independent pharmacy and say hey look at this vitamin you know we set up wholesale accounts i mean yeah Marcia, take it podcast, to your independent I, pharmacy and say look at this vitamin Oh, I will be you need to order. when I when I go and get my um COVID booster today. So yeah, we're getting boosted before an ACDS. Mm-hmm. Mm. <sighs> first booster, second first booster, second booster, second booster. Yes. Yeah. So that that is on the book. So it's better. I mean, before we hit an ACDS and then we come back from an ACDS and then go straight to Spain, and it would be it would really suck if they changed it and said, oh, before coming in the U.S., you have to test negative. And it's like, oh no. Yeah, it's so. interesting. Uh, my wife just had COVID about a month ago, and I told her I think she should really wait on her boost, the neck, her second mm-hmm. booster, till that one that comes out. And they're supposed to come out with a new, the uh, new Coke. They're supposed to come out yeah. with a new formula um, into September. We'll see. Is it still? Have you heard anything? Is it still looking like you're going to be able to get it into September, or you think more? Um, that, that's what we hear so far. Um, Department, of, I haven't reached out to Department of Health yet, but they're saying in the September, October will be, I guess, be more specialized uh, vaccine for the variant. Right now, it's all monkeypox we're hearing, obviously uh, from COVID, but everybody wants to hear about the monkeypox vaccine right now. So, yeah. So, what's the are are is pharmacy going to carry monkeypox vaccine? What's going? On? It seems to be a limited supply today. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I, that's what I, I've heard. Um, I think it's going to be specialized Department of Health and a uh, very limited amount. So, What about now the, the – is it smallpox vaccine that also helps? There's a different vaccine that they said, hey, if you had it, that it, it helps as well. That those of us I, who have the scar, who are old <laughs> enough to have the scar, have it. I think that was yeah. small, smallpox. No, yeah, I'll that, have to look into it. They, the Department of Health – Reach out to us and like, hey, you know, anybody calls, no, just send them to let them call us at the Department of Health and we'll tell them if they're eligible. I'm like, OK, you can call the Department of Health and see if you're eligible. I'm oh, sure their wow. phones are yeah. ringing off the hook. But. I can't imagine. Yes, yep, we have a confirmation box. from the uh, the studio that it is smallpox that helps. Yes, yeah, so um, full, our, our setup here is that we each have a camera facing us, and then we have a screen that we're looking at that's between our two cameras, and then right underneath the screen where we're looking at you, we have a message board where somebody from the from the that's managing. Madison, is, yeah, yep. Yeah, she said if you had the smallpox vaccine, it's eighty nine percent effective against the monkeypox. So. But mm-hmm. they but they quit giving Probably the smallpox vaccine. Yeah, no, but Spain. they quit giving it in the United States because they eliminated smallpox um, yeah. sometime after. Yeah, but if you know, we would have got traveling... it in school. Yeah, you know, they lined us all up. Right. And, you know. Right, y'all. Your generation got it in school. My generation did not. Mark got it because he went to the military. Probably right. before going to Spain. It, which I mean, if you're traveling internationally, they let you get the. Don't, don't they? Know. I have no idea. We'll have to ask. Do they let you get smallpox vaccine for you? He if you're know. traveling internationally. So how did you, why did you decide to go into pharmacy? Tell us the, uh, yeah, tell so us the early story track. of Pete. Um, obviously not, not too long in this journey. Got a long ways to go, but uh, I went, um, I was a baseball player, played college baseball for a while. I see the connection. Uh, baseball, drugs. No, I didn't. Nah, not really. So no. I, I got done with, you know, playing baseball in college and I actually applied to uh, PA school. I was going to PA school and I had a, uh, I was supposed to start in January, PA school, and I graduated in May. And then I was like, I've got to find a job for six months till I go to PA school. And I had a buddy that was like, I can get you a job at this pharmacy. And I was like, awesome. Sounds good. So I went to work at this pharmacy. I went to work for a guy and fell in love with it day one. I mean, I, I truly loved every aspect of it. And I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. But then he was like, you need to go to pharmacy school. And I'm like, I'm not going to pharmacy school. I'm starting PA school in like two months. He was like, no, I'm going to pharmacy school. So when PA school came up, I was like, well, we'll, we'll push it off a year and make a decision. So we pushed it off a year and pharmacy school it was. So huh. that's what I did. It was pretty, it wasn't hard getting into pharmacy school or wh- which one did you go to? So I went, Dr. Dalton, uh, went down to South University. So that okay. was ba- where I lived. I could commute. To there, um, okay. it's about an hour and thirty minutes away from my house, and I could commute every day. Oh wow! Um, so that's what I did. 
that's a that's a commute hour and a half one way hour and a half one way yeah, yeah that's a california style commute there all right so when did you graduate so i got away far uh Undergrad in 2015, uh, and then graduated pharmacy school in last year, 2021. All right, so so last year you graduated from pharmacy school, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're you're part owner in a pharmacy. Oh yeah, so I bought my first one in 2018, my first pharmacy. Um, so I was an owner before I went to pharmacy school. I guess I kind of did it the roundabout way. Uh, but yeah, so we, we bought a, we bought a store closest we could find, closest to the pharmacy school. Okay. Uh, and my, my job would be to, you know, run the pharmacy while I was in pharmacy school. It sounded it sounded like a lot better idea at the time than it, than it actually was. So is it still uh, an hour and a half commute or have you moved closer to the pharmacy? No, it is still an hour and a half commute every day. Wow. Now, you, do you have just the one pharmacy or? in? No, now. So now our, our group is a, a, a group of eight stores. Okay. Um, I'm an equity owner in five of the eight. Okay. So uh, I got to know what's magical about this neighborhood or this house that it, an hour and a half commute is worth it. Cause I sold a house because of an hour and a half commute. Nothing. I, it, it is, I mean, it's where my wife's family's from, okay. um, but that's about it. Oh uh, yeah. She's got a grand a grandma that's, I think she's in her eighties and she's not moving ever again. So it's, uh, but we're, we're looking to hopefully shorten that drive some very soon. So yeah, I had a, uh, a boss that used to always say that men were female migratory, that they they followed, they ended up being you where, still the, say that yourself. where the where the women's parents are. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not where. It doesn't apply to me. It doesn't. I'm not. Doesn't really apply to me. Kelly's not where. I, but it did apply to me for a long. It, piece it applied to you for a, for a long piece. When we had grandkids, you know, we wanted the when we had kids, we wanted the kids yeah. to know their grandparents, and more than yeah. just hey, they see them twice a year. You know, wanted them. That's to right. Experience them. Um, yeah. but once they emptied, empty nested, then my wife was a, was a pharmacist and she had a job in that town. So I was like, either we can both drive 30, 45 minutes or I can just drive. And so that's what I did. I decided to just drive an hour and a half every day. So did you have a fast car or truck? What, what, were, you, I, what were you driving for an hour and a half? I've got a 2005 Malibu that's got 335,000 miles on it. Fuel it efficiency. Is a, wow. A, a bound to stop any day now so that so, sounds like my daughter so was a pharmacist so i mean your little one was december 2021 mm -hmm. so he's six seven months seven months yes so or, is she gonna go back in a pharmacy or she is uh she's done, not going back to the job she had before uh but she's now we're trying to get her enrolled as kind of our clinical pharmacist um okay. more so she's going to handle all the you know, medication therapy management and hopefully grow that going forward. Very cool. Cool. So how does a young guy like you, how, how did you fund the pharmacies? You, family loans or just no. go out and get a loan? <laughs> no. Um, the, so the guy I went for originally in the store, the, the first store, he, um, he, he has a great pharmacy. He uh, is still a great pharmacy. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's one of the, it's one of the, one of the best pharmacies I've ever been in. He is very active in his community. So, you know, when he built his pharmacy and he started it and had, I think he's in about year 15 now, but he, he, he marketed himself, you know, in the pharmacy so much that he was the face and he could never leave, but he wanted to grow outside of that store, you know, and so his, the goal would be to, I guess, him to kind of be the backing and me to go do the, do the work necessarily. Um, and so that's kind of what we did. He, me and him became partners, uh, oh, nice. and then he he so kind, kind of, of an earn out the, kind of thing. Yeah, so kind of a yes, sir, pretty much. Nice. So what are you you saying? He was really involved in the community. What does that mean? What kind of things did he do where he was really involved in the community? Um, I'm a, I don't know, like, I guess I'll toot his horn a little bit, but he um, he's very active in the community. He you know he's. Rotary speaks at Rotary. He's a you know small group leader in town at one of the local churches. Uh, he he's very very prominent in the community. And obviously during you know during the COVID pandemic and everything that was that was critical uh, yep. for the success of the pharmacy and for you know the livelihood of our patients. So so what kind of all right so so you're kind of taking over this being active in the community. So what kind of stuff do you do? So in our community. 
So, and I, I'll speak to, I guess, to my store in, in particular. Okay. Um, the in our community, I, I'm in a I'm in a very rural area. My main store, I guess, I work at the most. Uh, where, you know, it's it's 15, 20 miles to the next pharmacy. Uh, it's very very rural. But in our community, we service such a we have such an opportunity just because of that our rule or I guess our ruralness or whatever you want to say. Uh, people come to us for all kind of stuff. And so what we do as far as you know vaccines and vaccine clinics, um, you know back to school rallies. We're you know we're big into what service can we provide for our community. And I think that's more how we are in the community is by the services we provide from a I guess from an aspect, I mean, you can come, you can come to our pharmacy, um, because there's there's not a doctor in our town, there's not a you know an MP, and we're gonna we're gonna help you out. We're, we're gonna send you either to the right place or make sure that you're taken care of locally. So and there's think, not a doctor from, in the town. No, so in our town, there's there's not a doctor or a, nor any kind of provider really. Yeah. So what's the population? Yeah. I think it's about twenty five hundred. Okay. Are you pulling though from around that into the town? So like you know, what's, what's the nearest the metropolitan area? No, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a coastal community. Uh, it's actually called coastal drug. I'm in a coastal community. So I have, um, it's, it's a very broad, I guess, spectrum from clientele. Like I have people who have houses on the coast that are, you know, extremely wealthy. And then we have probably one of the most poverty stricken, communities in the country i mean it, it my our our clientele is very very broad for who we serve huh Coast. so what is the closest doctor then or specialist from 15 50, it's probably 15 miles and i would say about 20 25 minutes okay is that the same is that probably the distance to the nearest hospital yeah it is and uh, the clinics are right next to the hospital down there so okay interesting Okay, so at Coastal Drug, you do COVID vaccines. You've got mm. your uh, su- your supplement, your vitamin um, ID mm. nine um, w- delivery. Obviously, you've got the the customer base that uh, would re- probably. Obviously, I mean, I assume, are you delivering? Absolutely, yeah, we yeah. deliver. Uh, How far away? It, <laughs> there's no there's no limit. I'll put it that way. Uh, we usually we usually try to put market off about 15 miles but the coat down there on the coast you know you can get pretty far deep in there 15 20 miles so how where on the coast is it uh, as compared it's right to like south Hill, of savannah right south of savannah okay yeah probably about 30 35 miles south of savannah yeah so i guess you got tybee islands right there beside mm-hmm. there so kind of 30 mm-hmm. miles south of what's the town what's the town called it's there midway georgia midway yep. georgia okay mm-hmm. oh so you're actually in georgia not south carolina yes sir oh Interesting. MedSync. What what does your MedSync numbers look like? Uh, so especially, I mean, we, we talk about delivery and we talk about how we have to be efficient in that aspect, especially now with you know the rise in prices of everything. Our MedSync is crucial. We we're that store is very compliant. We're probably running anywhere from sixty to seventy percent MedSync. Awesome. Um, so it's yeah, wow. we we try we really try our best to to be as efficient sync wise as we can because of. The, our barriers to delivery. Okay, and then something else I read. Y'all have a free children's vitamin program. Can you t- tell me a little more about that? Yeah, so uh, it used to be through Amerisource, but we kind of continued it. It's uh, free kids vitamins. Um, any ages 4 to 12, we offer a free supplement. If you're not able to afford a vitamin for your kid or your insurance does not cover one, uh, we can offer you a free kid supplement. Hmm. Okay. Dad, did you change those sellers? Is that our, our Amerisource no longer offers the? I don't think Amerisource continues that program. So we went out and found a found a secondary source that we were able to still kind of do it the same way, pretty much. We, I mean, it's free for the patient. So. Interesting. Gotcha. So, is that though? You say free for the patients. Are you guys funding that, or are y'all? Yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're funding that. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Interesting. So what's what's next in the pharmacy? What are you working on? So what is the kind of stuff you say today, You're 60% you know, when you get off of here today, what's, what's, what's on your mind? What are you, what are you trying to change? What is Pete or improve? working on yeah. right now? <laughs> well, I mean, it all changes day to day. Of course, uh, obviously we, we were huge into, I guess I would say we're huge into COVID, but we obviously vaccines, antivirals, monoclonal antibodies, all that. Um, right now we are 
doing it. We're making sure that, you know, we're providing tests still. We're still doing administering tests. Uh, we're still uh, dispensing over the counter tests to, to, to patients. Um, and then also right now, I guess I'm sure as every independent pharmacy, we are in the process of we have or about, I guess we're about a month into this injective relief from as far as the DEA and our wholesalers. OK, so right now we're, we're trying to make sure that we have all our boxes checked from um, from that aspect as far as policies and procedures and uh, just make sure we're doing ample reporting and make sure that we're ready for whenever if we're ever questioned or anything comes up. Are you doing anything with any physicians? Do you have any kind of, um, um, what, you know, uh, what's it called? A collaborative Sorry. practice. Yeah. Agreement. Collaborative mm-hmm. practice agreements with the, with the physicians being that far away. No, not currently. So right now we are in the process of, uh, building an, a new location and we're going to actually add a provider hopefully next to us in that location. Very so that's cool. our, that, that's our future of bringing access of healthcare to the, our area. Would that be a PA or a? A doctor? A MP, yeah, nurse practitioner. Okay. So is this going to be in, in Midway also, or is this going to be? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we're going to start it there, and then hopefully as it in, as it evolves, maybe we can bring it to other areas. Um, we struggle. There's a Obviously, as we talk about pharmacists, we talk about provider status and pharmacists mm-hmm. you know, offering clinical services. There's going to be an area, uh, a gray area as far as, you know, when do we, when do are we starting to step on toes of our providers? Because in, in rural areas like us, our providers are still independently owned practices. Uh, most of them are. You know, I, I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want the provider thinking, hey, Pete, the pharmacist is down there still in my patients. Um, so that's not what we're, we're, so we're trying to, I guess, figure out how to navigate those waters. Yeah, and especially I, I think, when you're going to have your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think COVID has definitely amplified that ten years, you know, immediately. It, prior to COVID, we would never even thought about doing a point of care test. Uh, we 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 don't want to, you know, we don't want to take any revenue from our providers. I mean, they're they're trying to make it just just like we are, and so I. I but now I think that after the pandemic, is there's going to be some opportunity there from point of care testing and from a urgent, I guess, urgent care and urgent med standpoint. Is there any kind of in, in, in where you are, any kind of like smoking sensation, uh, diabetes education, any of that kind of stuff that's billable? No, uh, not not currently. Um, our, we are one of the few states that aren't doing anything like that necessarily. Um, I was at a, a board meeting for the independent pharmacies a couple of weeks ago, and I think that's coming. I think it's going to come down um, in Georgia way of birth control. I think they're going to try to get pharmacists um, – prescribing authority to prescribe or dispense birth control. But obviously, you know, we're going to do everything we can to make sure we're prepared for that whenever that day comes. Yeah, Moose's, um, the two girls that we talked to from Moose's Pharmacy, that's what they were working on in North Carolina um, and trying to get the get the program there, I believe. Hmm. That would be interesting. We're going to do a whole bunch of work to get pharmacists to be able to prescribe birth control, and it's going to go over the counter. Mm-hmm. See, and, and and this was our conversation as well. Um, I'm not very. I wouldn't say my expertise is birth control, but if if I've got to learn how to dispense birth control so I can start doing diabetes management, then I'm going to learn how to dispense birth control. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's going to be like. And there was a Providence in Canada that we we talked about that. You know, they had right now they do 49 different uh, agreements for pharmacist dispensing or pharmacist authorizing and it and it started with the an uh oral antiviral medicine for uh a fever blister that's how it started interesting what what's the place in canada i can't remember what that place it's a providence in canada and they right now it's i think they have 49 different uh therapy options on pharmacist prescribing and it's in the first one they started with was a uh, fever blister medicine interesting be interesting to see how that how that that path went, yeah, and, and and to me, one of the things about birth control, with my limited experience, um, is just the that the tweaking, you know, the this one doesn't work, we're gonna try another one. This one doesn't work, try another one, which probably doesn't lean it lend well to keeping going back to the, you know, to the doctor's office. You know, this makes me dizzy, yeah. or this makes me this, or this or makes nauseous, me or, not. Yeah, yeah, this makes you nauseous, or this makes me gain weight, or. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think the, the original pharmacist role was 
tweaking medications through compounding and, you know, trying to figure out what works for the individual, um, not knowing anything about heavy metabolizers and, and all that kind of thing, uh, that they know today. So, yeah, yeah, super interesting. Um, what else, what else are we doing to, what do we, we learn anything at a, at a Maris, Marisource uh, trade shows where we saw you, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Marisource. Um, you learn anything there you want to try? As far as uh, a lot of, I guess, the marriage force, that was a, uh, more of a make sure we're checks and balances. Obviously, it was a lot about injunctive relief. Um, we talked about, you know, I went to the, the, the guy from past. I forgot his name, but we I think you just Trent, had him on a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, he, I went to his uh, his speech or his uh, – so just a lot of that was more necessarily making more sure More defensive that our, than offensive kind of? Yeah, I, I would say exactly. Um, and then we went, we went – I went to the Sykes uh, CE – Listen to that for the accounting. Make sure. Uh, I really do think that you know we're at this obviously this pivotal point in pharmacy, and we talk about this a lot. Is uh, there's only so much pharmacists can control on what we do right now on a daily basis um, when it comes to when it comes to our margins and our profit. And ones, you know, how, how can we figure out how to buy it cheaper? And I, that, I think that's kind of going to be our our mindset going forward. How can we buy it cheaper, and how can we you know dispense it more efficiently? And that's one thing we obviously, you know, with the, with the PMS with Pioneer, we, we try to do that the best we can. We try to be as efficient um, when it comes to dispensing as we can. Yeah, and it's not just about efficiency. It's about getting creative. Like, I mean, you coming up with the vitamin that you sell in your pharmacy and then also like Amina putting clinical pharmacists in doctor's offices. So, um, yeah, you're not going to make it on the margins on generic drugs. Um, yeah, it's it's getting creative with MedSync. And, I mean, that's kind of how MedSync was started, was, you know, trying to get all your medicines at once and um, charge a, a small fee for it. Yeah, MedSync is a is an efficiency it's a, tool. And it's an efficiency tool. I'd be surprised many people get to get the charge for it. I, I agree 100%. I think, I think Amina is, I think she's incredible. I've listened to her speak many a times. Uh, I, I do think we're on the verge of this clinical clinical aspect uh it's it's you know the work that, that joe's done people at cpsn um it's mm-hmm. it's how do we get there uh it's kind of the next step so right now it's going to be you know making sure that making sure that we're doing everything we can right now i guess with the best efficiency or most efficiency we can as it especially as it as we can tell the 2024 and our, our rule change for dr fees and everything so yeah Gotcha. So what um what makes an amina an amina? You know, it, it's interesting to me. You have some names that are thrown. I was I was watching. Uh, they were interviewing vendors, uh, NCPA to I guess asking vendors whether NCPA was any good or not. I, I saw on their website promoting, and you know, one of the guys said, "Well, I get to interact with people like Joe Moose and Amina." What what makes an amina an amina? Honestly, I think, and I I. I, I I mean, I met Amina a couple of times. I never really have a full conversation or anything with her. But honestly, I think it's her ability to to see the end goal. And I think that's especially in pharmacy. And I think that's one thing we, we really try to do is, you know, you know where you want to be one day, how to get there. You have no idea, but you just got to figure it out on a day to day basis. And I think that's one thing that she does. I think that's one thing that every successful independent pharmacy owner does or pharmacist does is. You know where you want to be one day. And you just don't know. How, you just got to figure out it every day. Um, you got to you got to figure out a way to get it done, no matter what that entails. And it's easy to say I can't do that, or I can't, you know, I I can't I can't find the resource to do that. But I think at the end of the day, it, if it can be found, you know, you got to be willing to find it. And I think that's one thing that has helped us so far is no matter what we've done, um, if if if, it's, if there's a possible way to do something, we're gonna figure out how to get it done. And I think that's a mindset you have to have to be successful. Who who are some people that you look up to and get advice from in the world of pharmacy? Oh yeah. Oh, I, I, um, I've got some pretty good con- I guess contacts uh, or friends. I mean, honestly, they're our friends now. Um, uh, Andy Brown, he's out of Kentucky. Uh, Adam Robinson, he's out of Kentucky as well. He. Uh, he's a workflow guy. He, uh, they're both, you know, brilliant guys. My partner, uh, Ben Ross in Statesboro, he's incredible when it comes to just having the ability to figure out how to get something done. He always says, all right, 
you know, if we, if we always say, you know, it can't be done, he's like, all right, if it could be done, if there's a way to get it done, how will we do it? And I think that's a mindset, you know, you have to start with. Absolutely. Uh, one, of my, one of my mentors is um, out of Metter, Georgia. He's, he's actually the president of pharmacy, uh, president of the board of pharmacy in Georgia, Dean Stone. Okay. Uh, he's an incredible guy, a great independent pharmacist. Now how did you meet him? Pharmacy owner. I actually, I'm from the town he's, he, his pharmacy's at. I grew up there. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I really didn't know him growing up much, but, you know, kind of as, as we, as we become, I've gotten more into the independent aspect. I've spent a lot of time with him and uh, he owns IHS pharmacy in Metro Georgia. Uh, he's a you know, great pharmacist. And about four years ago, I think he was appointed to the board of pharmacy. And this year he became president of the board of pharmacy in Georgia. Very cool. Yeah. Do you find, so, you know, one of the things you didn't say about Amina was her um, history of helping others, not helping other pharmacies, not necessarily her pharmacies. You know, the amount of time that she spends. Um, Almost like coaching. Just on things and- that help other people. Uh, whether it be now the Avon Academy, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, PDS. She, anybody ask her a question or like, hey, I'm interested in diving into this and how do I start it? She's like your friend. She's like, we got this. We can do it. Let's do it. Or like Joe and, and all the time he spends on CPSN mm-hmm. and, and, and pushing stuff that aren't directly benefiting his pharmacy. Um, Absolutely. And I, t- I tell you, and probably I didn't um, mention, but a huge chance he down in Valosta. He's about to be the president of NCPA. Yep. Uh, he, mm-hmm. I, I talked to him um, a couple weekends ago, a pretty good bit. And that was one thing he he said. He said the most fulfilling thing in pharmacy is when you help other people. And if it doesn't, and, and, and he said, obviously you help your patients, but when you can help other independent pharmacy owners, you're moving the profession forward. And that that's, sometimes that means you're not getting paid for what the that. service you do. But I, I do believe, and I think he's 100% right, whatever we have to do to move our profession forward is only going to benefit everyone else. But, um, but do, you, do you think that Amina, and, and, and you know, I, I think in that group would be Bob Lomanak. You, you, you know, you, mm-hmm. you think that in Absolutely. helping others, you have all these little experimental kind of pharmacies, you know, when you're trying to help people and you tell them something to try and they give you feedback and you see the results. You're you're speeding up evolution, right? It's kind of like fruit That's flies, right. right? You're you're getting to see and observe. Um, one of my childhood heroes, uh, Zig Ziglar. You know, one of his big big sayings that I go on is, "You can have anything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want." Right? Yeah. And and. and 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 that's the thing i'm trying to figure out so so those guys that you named are some of them like that are they helping other pharmacies i mean they're helping your pharmacy right because that's why you consider them a a mentor do they help other pharmacies besides your pharmacy absolutely i mean i i think you know and i'll talk about hugh chancy real quick um one of the you know the biggest compliment i got from him was another independent pharmacy owner in his own town so his direct competition was the person that gave the biggest compliment about him, which just shows you how true he is about just literally helping every pharmacy he can. And I think I think he's going to be phenomenal as the president of NCPA, and I do think he's he's one of the people I extremely look up to in this profession. Yeah, yeah. You almost think it as you, you know, wish you could get people thinking of it as a ratio. Um, you know, you, you think you're a guy at a high school dance. Dancing is just a factor of how many people you're willing to ask, right? Sooner or yeah. later, somebody's going to say yes, right? And, and if you get people thinking about success in business, and let's take that into pharmacy, it is just a ratio of how many people you have to help. At some point, mm-hmm. you're going to have helped enough people that you're going to automatically be successful, whether it's helping doctors or patients or other pharmacies or a combination of those. I, uh, I I kind of squirm and bite my tongue every time somebody – I talk to the pharmacist and they're like uh, – and you ask them if they're in CPSN and they're like, yeah, you know, but I'm thinking about canceling it. They haven't done anything for me. Yeah. And you're like, what have you done for them? Yeah. Right? You yeah. know, the, the CPSN is a tool. It's like a lawnmower. 
right? <laughs> you know, That's right. You, 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 you don't want to cut your grass with, with, with scissors, but it's a tool you have to use and you have to help. It's like, you know, when have you called them and said, Hey, CPSN, what, what can I do? Here's what my town's like. What, what can I do to help um, move things forward? I think you forgot. We forgot to mention a cheerleader, and I'm going to throw out the, the name out there, Ben Jolly. Oh, yeah. He is a huge supporter of pharmacy and even breaking it down and simplifying and finding ways to simplify difficult tasks. Yeah, there's like 400 pharmacies that he, yeah. he works with. Now, Ben's a little bit more of an entrepreneur. Now, I, <laughs> yeah. my guess is that, ben, uh, though, I, if I had to guess, my guess is he started helping people for free. Right, and well, then he yeah, was helping absolutely. people set up stuff like that, and people well, and started he's, to he's realize. He's also kind of a, a Joe Moose. He's a, a second gener, second, third generation, third generation pharmacist. Yeah, and I think people started to realize and say, like, "Hey, Ben, instead of helping me with this, can I just pay you to do it?" Yeah, that's <laughs> and, right. and they realized that's right. that he was so good at what he was doing that they could pay him decently and be be better off. Um, and so I, I guarantee you that that came from that same. He helped enough other people, and all of a sudden, boom. Yep. You know, n now that's returning. Uh, Probably the two crucial things in independent pharmacy right now, as far as from a dispensing standpoint, is if you, if you know your pharmacy software and you know your payers and you know the third parties, that's the two biggest assets you can have. And Benjamin Jolly knows the pharmacy software. Yeah, he knows it better than probably anyone I've ever met. And I think that's very crucial to be successful. If you can figure out how to make something more efficient and how to do it better and quicker and faster, you're going to be more successful. And I think he was the epitome of that. But do you believe that he'd have that knowledge of the software and all that stuff if he'd have just been working that in his pharmacy? I don't. I think I he think so got either. that knowledge of his software and that knowledge of all of the different payers and how they work and the problems by going, helping his buddy and helping this buddy yeah. and helping that body and helping other people. He developed this super skill where now he's a superhero, <laughs> right? And then, That's and then right. now he's created this thing of value that started off by him just volunteering and helping people. And, and now imagine if all, you know, 10,000 pharmacies, pharmacists did that. You know, they yeah. really took in their mind, hey, my success is just a factor of how many people can I help, right? If I'm not successful, I just haven't helped enough people yet. And that's right. And, and helping people that matter. And some of that's doctors. Hey, every doctor that I help, I learn something more about what a doctor needs um, mm -hmm. to be helped. So super kind of a preview. I think that's what's going my little 10 minute NCPA is going to be about this year. Kind of a, you know, I think it's kind of cheesy to do the, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. But that's the, that's the idea. And, and, and people have to at some point hit a, I believe about success is about priming the pump yeah. about helping other well, people. And, and I mean, to kind of case in point is that, you know, Ben Jolly, um, is a, a great example of this because, you know, you get into the profession because you want to help people, but somewhere down the line, yeah, pharmacy got harder and some people have lost that, that vision. And so it's just a matter of getting the day and filling the scripts and taking yeah. Yeah. patients. And it's, it how, becomes well, less how many, about how much more people does he get to help because he's helped other pharmacies. Yeah. Well, so I, I think there's many. a factor of there was a time pharmacy was easy and I just needed to hang a sign and come in and work. And, and now it's more like a business, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a business that I have to work at to succeed. Now I have like some, he, I believe he even started a Facebook group where he just answers questions. All the yeah. time. All the time. 24 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you that's about it. Yeah. Nobody's paying him to do that. Answer. Him yeah. and uh, Joe McCamey and. Um, yep. Who's yeah. the other guy? It's one of the. Travis Wolf. No, no, no there's another Travis. guy. There's three of them um, that, that manage. Joe Williams. Joe Williams. Williams. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Uh, dedicating their time to help that. Uh, Bruno, um, who we've had on here out of California, he does that yeah. on our on our pace where people post ideas. Yep. He's like, oh, guys, you can do that. Yep. On um, the idea yeah. board. And, and I think in reading those and trying to solve people's problems and trying to think about those, you're just moving things better. You just need you, 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 you know, learn. We, I mean, you, more you're of that. Constantly and, learning. When it, when you when somebody asks a question, even if you don't know it and you look it up, you you learn more about it. I, th I think that's crucial for pharmacy going forward. So these pharmacies that you have part ownership in. So you say you have part equity in five different pharmacies. 
what role do you take in there in them? Do you, do you visit them? Do y'all get together and design programs together? What do you do? Uh, I'm con, I guess, um, they all differ. It depends on my, what, what, the, what that pharmacy needs from me. I, I would say my role more necessarily is, is learning is of trying to involve, uh, I go to a lot of different trade shows. I go to a lot of different pharmacy conventions and I pick the brains of every person that I can talk to. Um, if, you know, if, if a guy asks a question in a seminar and, and it's a good question or if they have a good, you know, I want to learn more about that. So my, 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 I guess my role is kind of to go out and learn and be the resource for, from our stores when they need it. You know, if, if a pharmacy's got a question on a, on a, on a negative remit or on a, so a medicine, the jolly we for your seven. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that at all because <laughs> my, my partners are, they're going to crush me when I say this, but <laughs> I just, I, I do think that I, I, I add some benefit, but by, by knowing, you know, if, if there's a, if there's a law question, if there's a, you know, board, uh, a question about should, how we should we do this or can we do this? You know, I, I think most of, most of our, my partners usually reach out to me and I guess that's kind of more of a resource standpoint. Now, some of them are less rural. The one we visited yeah. with Aaron um, that you came, that was a less rural pharmacy. And, and nice, super, super sharp and nice uh, crew you had there in that pharmacy. Um, what kind of stuff, do you visit that one very often? Is that? I don't go to that one as much. Uh, that the, the pharmacist in charge, uh, also partner, Neil, he does a phenomenal job in that location. Uh, that's a That's a very, very... It, it, it is not. It's a very urban area. It's Savannah. I mean, it's a huge town. I guess huge to us because you know Savannah is a big city. Uh, yeah. But he's in a small subset community of, of, of Georgetown, and he services that that's that community. Uh, and he he is very, especially you know we talk about access to healthcare. I mean, he in that area he was very crucial during the you know the, during the pandemic to to that area. Uh, he's you know he's a big med sync guy. He he try and like like I said he tries to we try to do it as efficiently as possible. Um, and mostly for Neil lately, uh, I'm there more for, you know, a resource if he needs something as far as I, like I just recently conducted, did a, we had an audit there from, uh, one of the PBMs and I, you know, my job, I went in there, made sure just double check that and Hmm. did took care of that for him. So are y'all members of pass? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any, so does he work, that community does he go visit the doctors in that mm-hmm. community or, or do you so yeah. he does that himself and yeah you, he does that do you come in and fill in for him while he's doing that or does he have somebody else who fills in for him he usually has another guy that fills in for him but i also i have been there a couple of times yeah and staff that store as well so so um aaron will be coming to work for us in september, september which is super excited about oh wow yeah she'll be um running our uh education uh, university if, if, program our, our university program our, our program that we run in colleges and in tech schools um if, if you think about um will who works for us we'll be doing graduate education and aaron will be doing undergraduate education so the the stuff that people do when they're going to get pioneer um all the pharmacy schools pharmacy students so tell us how, how was aaron tell us about you got any aaron stories about aaron as a teacher she's tough um, but she was, she was, she was pretty great. Uh, she, I really appreciated her knowledge because she knew the, I guess the access to the industry. She knew the industry. She knew, you know, she worked for, for, uh, Joe, Joe. Yep. She, you know, she, she had been at Richmond Hill pharmacy, worked for Mr. Al. Uh, I mean, she had done all this thing. So she knew what the industry and she could, I guess she knew how to relate better to that than, than most pharmacy school professors do. She, she was very, and I mean, her husband, her husband, I talked to her husband probably more than her now because he, uh, he works at one of the pharmacies in the town next to us. And I talked to him on the phone a pretty good bit, but, uh, she was, she was pretty great, especially for her knowledge from the clinical services aspect and from the, you know, the, I guess, treatment as over the counter aspect too. Yeah. So she was able to give you more real world type experience and somebody who'd just gone right into being a, That's um, awesome. yeah, a teacher. So, so how was Pete as a student? I was not. I, I, don't ask Dr. Dalton. Um, <laughs> no, I remember like, I think you were, uh, there was something you were talking about and Aaron's like, so this is what you were doing in class instead of paying attention. And I think it was working on that vitamin supplement. I, yeah, I, um, like I said, I was, you know, I had bought a store before I went to pharmacy school. So, you know, a lot of time in pharmacy school, I was 
dealing with the pharmacy. Um, I yeah. guess in that, that's in amazing that. that you could do both of those at the same time. I mean, mm-hmm. it had to have helped you. I don't recommend it. Don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't um, recommend owning a business and being in pharmacy school. I could see that. But that was one of the things like, all right, you know, I guess it was, we've got to figure out how to get it done. So let's figure out how to get it done. You know, I had a great group of guys that I went to pharmacy school with that, that helped me along the way that, that made sure that the deadlines, because, you know, I was, I would have to step out of class on the phone with, you know, CVS Caremark wondering, our recredentialing get get the passport you know or something like that and, right uh, mm. so it was it was a it was a day and day battle of trying to be a pharmacy student and also own a pharmacy so so her husband works in the pharmacy in the town over is he he driving a long way too uh, he's probably like 30 i'm sure he's like 30 45 minutes okay. probably yeah interesting yeah he works for uh walmart mm-hmm. yeah he works for walmart so boo yeah, you need to recruit him to come work for you. <laughs> you, you. You see there where where Pete just said another pharmacy in a town next door. Yeah, I didn't want. I didn't want. I didn't want to say <laughs> what pharmacy. Um, but yeah, Marcus, we're gonna just start giving. Poach. We're, we're gonna just start poach. giving. We need a blooper. We need like a like. <laughs> what was that song? That was the the game show Whammy. And then Whammy. Oh, yeah. over, whammy. We, we need a Whammy. We need to be to pop a Whammy on the screen. <laughs> no, that, that, if, I remember if, if the you Whammy mentioned game. Amazon. Whammy. Uh, the whammy. Yeah. Just Well Well I mean that's where I like get a lot of my like project stuff, but we'll bleep you. Okay. <laughs> we'll bleep you. <laughs> bleep. Yeah. So what do you do for fun? Besides oh, pharmacy. Man. I know you love pharmacy, but are you you fish, you scuba, you right now I change diapers. Yeah. Uh, that's because no, you gotta I, work on your nose. Yeah. Well, you you, man, you, you, just you, you gotta be able to smell it and first. And then, and if you can smell it first, you leave and you don't have to change it. Uh, I'm that's a, how I got I have an to do them Okay. I was, I was actually going to ask Marsha, how was the fishing trip? Didn't he go, your husband go on the fishing trip? Yeah. Um, yeah, they did inshore. They, they did inshore. Um, they caught a lot of uh, redfish and I forget what else, but uh, came back with a third degree sunburn on my son's neck. Blistered, like bad, but... Mm. And I got on to him and he goes, no, I'm good. I'm good. I tan. I'm like, no, you don't. You're white like your daddy. Yeah. They caught him. The, the interesting thing they said that the redfish there, they had a friend of theirs, um, friend of Mark's from the military who was from Tampa area. Mm-hmm. And Clear one water. of his, one of his comments was the redfish here are a different color. Mm-hmm. I guess the redfish on, in the, on the Gulf side, on the Gulf side are redder and on the Atlantic, Atlantic side, side are or- more silver. Um, yeah. Kind yeah, that was that was also interesting. Uh, but they could, and they also noted that they caught all the fish in a short period of the long period of the fishing trip. Yes. So, and it was uh, hot. But my uh, son had yeah. a lot of fun. Like I guess after the fish quit biting, he had a lot of a lot of fun uh, messing with the captain and just like telling him very outlandish stories. And the guy would be like, "Oh, oh, really, really?" And he's like, "No, not true at all." None of it. <laughs> and the guy would just like start dying laughing because he was like, I'm just gullible. He just kept, he just kept believing. Just kept believing. Do you yeah. fish in the ocean? Yeah. yeah I, I love fishing, hunting. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an avid duck hunter, I guess. So uh, avid outdoorsman. Uh, so what, are you, what do you, what do you fish for? Do you go out deep sea fishing? The, the big long no, haul out there? No. Most of the stuff we do is kind of intercoastal. Um, okay. Red, redfish trout. Uh, we, we do love to flounder gig. Uh, that's one thing that we've kind of done probably okay, the past couple of years. I mean, it's what it sounds like. You, I mean, you gig, you have a, a gig, and you gig flounder. Uh, it's you go at okay. night, obviously, and it's it's pretty fun. Uh, we have a great time, and obviously, we love to. Yeah, I think the fish they the, kept were flounder. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my favorite. Yeah, so. it was nice. Good deal. So, Mar- how long have you been married? I've uh, been married. Oh. Five and a half years now. We've been together for about 11. Uh, been married five and a half. So. And little one, because we're friends on Facebook, and I get to see yep. that cutie, and he's just like all smiles. This is the fun stage. Enjoy it. Hey, that yeah, is not true. This is not, this is what we, this is the eater, eater, pooper, sleeper stage. Uh-huh. The fun stage is about two when they start thinking and talking. And, and they learn the word no, and that no, becomes their favorite word. No. No, it yeah, is. I'm, I'm not is looking. Not, I, I, he's starting to move not. now, starting to crawl, and I'm like, oh gosh, here we go. So mm-hmm. yes, every stage is better than this stage. Moms have chemicals or something exciting. that make you not kill them. 
uh, maybe, but they they are all exciting except the teenagers. Yep. Yeah, that they're all. We are te- our teenagers were fine. That was we were we've been super blessed. He he slept through. He's not waking up one night. I mean, he slept eight to ten hours every single night since we brought him home. Um, nice. So we yeah we the, hit the jackpot. Yeah, that, I remember that's that. The, the false. So that that's what tricks you into having another one. Another yeah, one. the first one you and almost then, could forget. I can't remember how many times we almost left Kaylee. Right, she's so quiet and sleeps, and then you have two, and yeah. it's not. Yeah, one plus one isn't two. Yeah, oh. we'll make sure that uh, Kaylee list well, uh, watches this episode. <laughs> yes, so how many kids do you want to have? In case your wife um, listens to this podcast. We'll put you on the spot. We, we, we want to have one more, uh, and I've always had something in my heart. I, I do want to adopt a third at some point. Um, okay. So I've always that's always been, I guess, a a calling for me. Uh, so I, I would love to have one more if God willing, and then this, I would like to adopt a third if I could. I love that. That that's awesome. Not a lot of people have a big enough heart to adopt. Yeah. Or it's it's not in their passion, or it's not in in their in their cards. So, well, I guess adopting can be easier or harder depending on the situation, the person they come in, depending on the situation yeah. that you're adopting. Yeah. So, but you can't awesome. change the life of everybody, but if you, you can change the entire life of one person. So, I oh, think absolutely. that's something that, uh, yes. something that I, w- I would love to do. My husband adopted my daughter. Oh. So, she came in the package. Yeah, she was part of the package. <laughs> yeah, and he was package. like, okay. Marriage license, birth certificate, That is all not one ex- time. exactly the same. Wasn't sacrificial giving. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, At least not most days, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Pete, it was fun. We've hit um, our hour. Well, oh, wow. I wonder where we'll see you next. Are you you going to NCPA? Um, probably. I don't. Not too sure. My sister is having a baby that week. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, so uh, we I, we'll see how that goes. I do. I am signed up, but uh, don't know. But we'll see. I, I'm sure I will see you guys around sometime soon. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, it was fun. It's good yes. talking yeah. to you. Thank you for spending the day. Uh, thank with y'all. Us. And best Appreciate luck. it. All right. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Bye. bye Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.